This episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. In the 19th century, foreign nations had been encroaching into China during their century of humiliation, and many took land and established concessions. The Chinese, who had historically been suspicious of foreigners and their technology and modernization, were experienced famines, floods, rebellions, wars, and rampant corruption. So they could not govern over a lot of the regions effectively, and throughout Chinese history secret societies like the White Lotus often exploited this. And in Shandong, the Fists of Harmony and Justice, another secret society, was formed, but were dubbed the Boxers due to members practicing martial arts. And the many local groups merged under the leadership of Zhang Zicheng, as their ranks swelled to around 10,000, filled with peasants, unemployed laborers, and the likes. Most of which believed Zhang had magic powers, and they too could become invincible. And in 1897, a couple of Germans were killed in Shandong, potentially by members of another society, the Big Swords. The Germans responded to this, the Ju Yi incident, by seizing Zhaozhou Bay, and built new churches and missionary activity increased in Shandong as it fell under German influence. This encouraged the Russians, British, French, and Japanese to claim their own spheres of influence, and the Chinese had to comply. Meanwhile, the Qing dynasty under the Guangxu Emperor did try to modernize through the Hundred Days Reform, but this angered the conservatives and the Empress Dowager Cixi seized power and reversed the reforms which they blamed on foreign influences. This division of China encouraged even more to join the anti-foreign boxers, but the Qing government did beat them in a small skirmish at Senluo Temple in October 1899. But the boxers, in the wake of this defeat, stopped trying to undermine the Qing dynasty, and used the slogan to support the Qing, destroy the foreigners. In response, Sisi issued edicts defending them, and this allowed the boxers to spread out, killing Christians and burning churches en route to Beijing. Over 400 foreign troops entered Beijing, but they were left trapped as the boxers cut the railway line to Tianjin in June 1900. Plus, Qing troops, notably the Muslim Gansu Braves, joined the boxers and both began attacking foreigners and burning churches in Beijing. Meanwhile, the Germans executed one and foreign troops began shooting at the boxers, causing even more to join the rebellion. In fact, between 100 and 300,000 men joined their ranks during the rebellion and the foreigners called for even more reinforcements. 2,000 troops landed in Tianjin, coming from eight different nations. Britain, USA, Japan, Germany, Austria, France, Italy, and Russia. However, they did not ask permission to land, which upset the Qing dynasty, who now saw it as an invasion. So the Qing decided to align themselves with the boxers. This new alliance was able to halt the Seymour expedition on the 18th of June at Langfang, forcing them to retreat. And then in Beijing on June 20th, the siege of the legation quarters officially began. The foreign legation quarters were located right next to the Forbidden City, where the Empress Dowager lived. And only around 400 troops protected the 400 foreign civilians and 300 Chinese Christians. But they still managed to drive back boxer attempts to burn the defenders out. Meanwhile, in the north, 100,000 Russian troops moved into Manchuria, there, they crushed the boxers who were harassing the construction of the Russian railway line in the region. And in Tianjin, 50,000 troops from the eight nations set out to Beijing. But without train lines, they only made it to Beijing in mid-August. Once there, they crushed the Chinese, ending the 55-day long siege and the rebellion. The Empress Dowager had already fled the city and there was no desire to continue the war, so peace was made. The Chinese were forced to pay war reparations and give Western powers even more enclaves and concessions. Russia continued to occupy Manchuria, and this resulted in the outbreak of the Russo-Japanese War a couple years later. And for the Chinese, it was just another event that weakened the Qing dynasty, and helped pave the way for the revolution of 1911 which saw the emperor ousted. This episode was brought to you by CuriosityStream, a subscription streaming service that offers over 2,500 documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. Get unlimited access starting at just $2.99 a month or $19.99 a year. And for my audience, the first 30 days are completely free if you sign up at curiositystream.com forward slash jabsy. And as you are all history fans here, they have a wide selection of history shows available, including things like the history of food. And I have just finished watching The Celts, Blood, Iron and Sacrifice, which I highly recommend.